Hello YouTube, and here we are with another Combiner Wars review. So this time I actually have my fourth combiner, um, or limb, for the combiner I'm going to do. And this is Sunstreaker, and this is actually another one I had passed up. Um, but after deciding that I needed another vehicle that was a car to balance out the leg that I used for Prowl, um, this was the best choice. Uh, the next best choice would have been gone with one of the Stunicons. Um, but I decided to keep it all Autobots in this respect, even though it really doesn't matter. But what I'm going to do, I'm not a huge fan of the bot mode, even just from first glance. Um, I think the, the Classics version is, is far superior. Um, however, as a car and a limb, I think he'll be suitable. So anyway, let's go ahead and open him up and see what he's like. So we're going to the package, and of course we've got another comic with a cover that's geared towards the figure. Um, all right, pack in. Nothing I care too much about because I'm going to get the trade paper back anyway. And then we have the figure. And of course, I mean, I'm, I'm not huge. And I think part of what uh, hurts the figure for me is this shade of yellow they used. Um, it's a little KO looking as far as the tone. Don't know why. Just I'm just not a huge fan of it. Now, here he is with the old generations figure who I think is considerably better as a standalone figure. However, being Combiner Wars, that's where this is going to have the plus, just because I'm going to use it as a limb. Um, now, at first, I wasn't too huge on this figure, but his, there's a few elements about him that actually make him pretty interesting. So, a little sword weapon here. Uh, it's kind of got some sort of gun built into it. Uh, and then he's got his limb, or his hand-foot weapon, which I just don't like the way they integrate into vehicle and bot mode, but... It is what it is. So, what's interesting about him, um, just from an engineering standpoint, something that I'm not used to seeing on Transformers, is down here, this hinge. So, the pelvis uh, actually is kind of a hinge itself. So, they both share the same hinge, which allows you to get this pivot, pivot movement here. And then there's the ball joint that extends off of it to give you the hip movement. So... It just allows for some minute changes, but I think it's pretty interesting how they've done it. Um, and also, the thing that I appreciate about this figure is the transformation process. Where these have all been fairly simple, uh, this one has a few clever ideas done with the to make the transformation a little bit more interesting. So we'll go ahead and transform into car mode. And so you pop up the chest, and we fold down the... Uh, actually, before we do that... Lower the shoulders because there's locks here that keep you from doing the full transformation. So when you pull down the shoulders, these locks will move out of place. And then you have these arms. And even though I'm typically not a fan of folding arms, but these do have the ball joint built into them, which would have been probably something they could have done with their construct bot or construct constructicons uh, to make them a better figure. And the arm folds up. It's clean. It's simple, and it works. So I, I give them kudos for that design element. Um, so go ahead, fold the arm up, now we've got that. So now this is free uh, to move. So once you move this up, you fold the head in, and then the, sort of like a, a front splitter you would see on a race car, it goes underneath the hood, I mean underneath the car, um, and then that just pops in. So all in all, that was pretty simple as far as transformation goes, and it did a good job. It hides the head. Um, just for being as simple as it is, it is clever. Now, the thing that's a little tricky is, and it's another interesting element they used, so I'm going to go ahead and raise this up because it, this is easier to do last, um, because there's these slots here on the legs, and it sort of makes sense to do them first just because... Well, you, you'll see why here in a moment. Uh, go ahead and put the, the feet and spoiler up. The legs collapse, which they all seem to kind of use that method. So you collapse the legs. And then we're able to snap it all together. Once you kind of find, and I find uh, compared to Prowl, this figure has got much higher tolerance for just fitting together. 
Uh, it needs a little bit more force, but it also holds better. So now this is where the, these grooves come into play. So now we can slide these arms back and it locks onto the legs and keeps them in place. Because if you, if you remember some, I mean, even with the older transforma transformers that had more complex transform transformations, um, a lot of things don't lock. They connect, but you'll have sometimes panel gaps and stuff like that, or things can kind of push apart because of that. And so this does make it a little harder to transform, but I think in the, in the long run, it's a better idea, especially since this is going to be a limb. It's going to help keep the car together um, as a limb. So there we've got that, fold the hood down, and there we have a vehicle. And this is a pretty decent vehicle. I mean, it seems just like another form of Lamborghini um, or some sort of supercar like the other one. However, I do think it looks pretty good. And now that you guys have seen car mode, uh, what I'm going to do first, I plan on using this guy in the end as a leg. But I'm going to go ahead and show you an arm mode uh, just for the sake of the review. So go ahead and fold this down. Push that out. Now we'll have to move the arms out for the sake of the legs. So then we can move the legs down. Disconnect. Okay, lock that. And this one, I'm going to leave it like that for the moment. So once you get to lock again, you can fold this down and you fold the feet down. And this is going to be the hand. So rotate as most of them do so you can get the double elbow movement. So there we've got that. Go ahead and pop out the hand. And I did, I did verify the Perfect Effect parts do fit in this. However, since they don't fit my prowl, um, I won't be using them until I get another set that I'll modify. All right, so here we have our Defensor Torso, or at least Hot Spot as a torso. And we'll put the limb. I'm using a Aerial Bot right now because I plan on using uh, this as the leg. Now, I do think this makes a better arm than Prowl did. However, it is still a little bit too chunky and not as mobile as the other ones. Um, so it, it, it is okay. It's not bad. Of course, for the look I'm going for, it doesn't balance out iron hide as much as I'd hoped. So now, I'm going to go ahead and swap him. I'm going to use Rook as my main, uh, my right arm. I've already got a hand on him. All right. So as you can see here, I like I like how this mass here helps balance out that. Um, so that's the look I'm going for with that. And now let's go ahead and combine him into a foot first, uh, so we can go to the next step. And that's it's pretty simple. You just go back partially to car mode. And even though I was praising that, that interesting design uh, for the pelvis, it does make it a little trickier for these collapsing legs. So, And the spoiler actually makes this harder to lock down, um, but with some force you can get it. So now, move that up. Oh, of course, re rotate the, the waist back. And then we can lock these in. Okay. And then we've got our foot. Like I mentioned in the past, I think it's best to put these. And my defensor has a problem. The spring mechanism here isn't very good, so I have to force it back. But to put limbs on sideways because it allows you to not have the ratchet working against you. Do 
it this way. Alright, and there we go. So there we go. And like I was saying, the widths of these cars are very close. Um, and I feel it makes it a lot more balanced than when using uh, one of the other vehicles. Uh, only gripe, and he's got different sizes knee pads. It's not a huge issue. Nothing on this is really exactly the same proportionally. It's just about the idea of getting balance to the figure just based off of weights of things and left to right. Um, I think this is a pretty decent mode. And I also have the, the Optimus Maximus uh, figure or Optimus Prime uh, combiner figure. So these could go on him if I end up getting more limbs. However, due to some of the QC uh, on the newer figures, that since they're, you know, repaints, um, there might be enough mold degradation there to where I don't know how many more of these I'm going to collect. I think I'm going to reserve myself for new molds or heavily retooled. Um, I think Bruticus is the only thing I've seen that is a maybe currently, but nothing else. Um, so anyway, I think this wor really works out for my additional combiner. I still think the Aerobots overall um, is a much better done figure. It's more cohesive. Uh, the QC is really good on them. It looks good. So anyway, just for my personal, you know, secondary combiner, just to mess with and put on the desk uh, and tool around with, I think this is a pretty good bot and it's worth checking out. You know, that, that's what's cool about this line is you can pick your own limbs and sort of do your own combiners as you see fit. So anyway, stay tuned. We should have some more Combiner War stuff coming up in the future um, if the Bruticus set comes out, you know, anytime soon. Um, and I've got some other Transformer and toy reviews coming up as well. So make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time. Take care.